How's it going everyone? My name is Jake and I'm back with another concept tutorial for you guys. This video I want to talk to you about compression. Compression is the process of lessening the dynamic range between the loudest and softest points of a specific element. Now this is one of the most complex and misunderstood processes of mixing. And there's a lot to talk about. So I am think I'm going to break this up into two parts. In this video, I'm going to break down each parameter and really explain what's going on and when you, adjust, when you adjust these controls. In the second part, I plan to apply this information into some cool techniques that you can use in your mix. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that video as that should be coming out soon here. Anyways, let's break down some of these parameters and I think we will shall start with the threshold control. All right, so the threshold is probably the easiest to explain out of all of these. Uh, what the threshold does is it determines the level at which the compressor will engage. So if you look right here, you see I'm at minus 28.4 dB. Everything below this minus 28.4 dB is not being affected by these controls. So if you understand this, you kind of understand that this control essentially determines whether or not or how often the parameters set come into effect. So like I said, this is one of the more straightforward parameters of the compressor, but it's very important and it's very interconnected with the other uh, parameters in a compressing unit. So moving forward, I just kind of wanted to bring up this picture here. So obviously you can see the threshold line here and you can see all of the other lines that are being created and each of them have a number, one to one, two to one, four to one, eight to one, and then infinity to one. So what this is talking about is ratio, which is our next control that I want to speak on here. So essentially what ratio is, it controls how much of the signal is compressed once the signal passes the threshold. So the question really is, what do these numbers refer to? Let's say that the threshold is set to minus 28 dB. That sounds like a pretty fair point. And we have our ratio set to four. So what does this mean? Once the signal surpasses this minus 28 dB threshold, as you can see this this dot here, which is representing the level of signal, is quite consistently passing this minus 28 dB, it is being compressed 4 to 1. So what that means is every 4 dB of signal that comes through past that threshold is being reduced to 1 in the output. So example for in this example, you see minus 28 dB, or you know approximately minus 28 dB in a 4 to 1. So Essentially, once the, the signal reaches 20, minus 24 dB, the compressor is outputting my math, uh, minus 27 dB. So it, you can tell that with a 4 to 1 ratio, at that ratio, it is 3 dB less gain. Hopefully that, that makes sense and hopefully that's not too wordy. All right, so the next two parameters that we're gonna talk about here is the attack and release. Now, these parameters are essentially what shape the way, the way the compressor sounds. The attack parameter determines how fast the compressor begins to reduce the dynamics after the signal passes the threshold. As you can see here on this graph, that bottom line there, the attack time, that curve is represents the attack time and how quickly the compressor will start to reduce the dynamic range past that threshold point. Now, the release time is kind of on the opposite side of the spectrum. Release time determines essentially how long it takes for the compressor to disengage after it falls below the threshold point. So you, as you can see, like these two parameters really affect the way that the compressor works and essentially helps you shape what you're compressing. So two good two examples of this. Let's go back to the mix here. So here we are back at the mix. Oops. 
and we have I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna solo this kick here. And we're just gonna adjust some some parameters here to make this more reasonable. So with a kick drum, it only has a transient and very little sustain. So therefore being, you know, you kind of think about that, how the attack and the release would complement this aspect of this element. If you want to compress the transient of the kick, you're going to have to have a very fast attack time. Because if you have a slow attack time, it's going to let the all, it's the compressor is not going to be able to compress the important part of the signal in time. So you want to have a faster attack time if you want to tame this transients of drums per se. Although, you know, sometimes you want to let that transient through. If it's, you know, whatever's bettering the mix, sometimes you want to let it through. And, that, and if that's the case, then you want to slow up your attack time. So in terms of release with the kick, for example, we don't have a lot. Every kick hit is definitely not three seconds long. So if you want to make it pop a little bit more, what's good is to, is to make this release time a lot faster so that it disengages immediately. So then you can tell the difference between the compressed and the uncompressed signal. And it really makes that those transients pop more. So what would be an example of something kind of on the opposite side of the spectrum? Well, I'm going to solo these keyboard, these piano, this piano here. So piano has a lot more sustain. So the way we want to treat this is we obviously want to have it sound a bit more natural. We don't really want the compression to be pulsating within those sustained notes. So it's really important on something like this to have a, a slower release time so that you don't necessarily hear the compression and the compression is just working as a dynamic leveler and really kind of helps bring out the piano more. So in terms of attack with the piano, we may, it's it kind of goes back to preference again or what the mix needs. Do we need to tame these transients or do we want to let these transients through? So that's always what I think about when I am adjusting the attack time. I think in this particular example, I definitely want the transients to come through more because I know there's a lot of things in the mix and I want the, the piano to kind of pop out as much as it can. So I do want some of those transients to go through. So I'd probably do some kind of moderate attack time here and a slower release. So that's how you kind of want to think about attack and release times. Always want to think about the instrument that you are uh, using compression on and how it's how it looks dynamically. All right, so the final control that I want to talk to you about is makeup gain. So obviously when you compress a signal, it gets quieter than the unprocessed version. So however, the makeup gain kind of does more than just make up for that level reduction. Let's take a look at this graph here. As you can see in this first photo on your left, this is the uncompressed signal. This is the natural signal. Number two is the signal that is compressed. The tree, as you can see, it probably has a faster attack time as most of those transients have been diminished. And it seems like it has a relatively normal release as the releases on both the compressed signal look pretty similar. But then let's go over to the third one, and this is where the makeup gain comes in. So we have the compressed signal, and you can see that it's significantly lowered those transients. Now to kind of bring it back up to that same level that it was before, we end up using makeup gain so that we can keep it at the same level while still reducing the dynamic range. I thought this was a really great picture as you could kind of bring everything together and kind of show the process of how we use makeup gain as it is the last step in the process. What this control can be used to do is bring up all of the softest parts of an element as well. Therefore, you know, effect effectively even furthering to lower the dynamic range. So I'm gonna bring up this mix one last time here. So let's listen back to this kick. 
So right now we have zero dB of makeup gain. So let's look or take a look at this kick here. So there's, we have the zero, obviously no gain ma is made up right now. So I'm gonna bypass what we have in terms of these settings. The settings don't, haven't really mattered too much, but I wanna use this to prove a point here. So everything's bypassed right now. Let's see how much signal we lose once I unbypass this. So it's, you know, it's a decent amount. There's a couple dB that need to be made up. So all we have to do here is essentially raise this up. Let's say, let's go, let's go 3 dB and see if there's any difference. It's not, it just sounds more snappy and that's just because of the little bit of compression that we've added. So that's kind of how you would use use makeup gain. You just have to also realize that it's bringing up the lowest parts, the softest parts of the mix as well as kind of making up for any level reduction that you have. So that's our, that's our first episode of our compression tutorial. Hopefully these parameters make more sense to you. Make sure that you subscribe so that you know when our next video is going to come out, which is going to be about actually applying some of this stuff and some great ways how to use compression in your mixes. So until next time, guys, have a good one.